you have to delete the images that you are the most proud of. Okay, maybe not delete them, but put them aside. This is common advice among writers attributed to a few authors, but it's been repeated over and over for a good reason, and it's because it's true. I believe that it also applies to photography. Let me tell you why. So in photography, a darling would be an image that you are really attached to, to the point where you are not seeing it objectively anymore. This usually happens when an image is uh, very difficult to make. We all have images we worked really hard for. We sweat for those images, perhaps we even bled to make them. Please be careful, don't put yourself in danger for an image, it's not worth it. Images that we love because of that, and that's also the reason why we have to get rid of them. It hurts, but it needs to be done. The idea is to look at our images as objectively as possible, without any feelings attached, to forget how hard it was to make those images. Of course, this is impossible to achieve, we'll always feel something for those images, we'll always remember how hard it was to make them, but it's something that we should strive for, at least. We need to know if it's the image that evokes those sensations that we are feeling because of the uh, composition, the light, the subject, the atmosphere, or if it's our memories from that moment that are responsible for those feelings. Because if it's the latter, if it's the context that only us have as photographers, as the makers of those images, then no one else is going to feel the same way we do when they look at them. Getting rid of your darlings can be very painful. It hurts to discard, to throw away an image. I know that very well myself, because in the making of my book one, I had to take an initial selection of 1,000 images and cut it down to just 200. I had to leave out a lot of images that I love, images that took a lot of effort, work, time, and dedication to make. And actually, I liked some of those images more than many that did make it to the book, but those images are special to me and only to me, not to anyone else. As an example, you won't find many images, if any at all, from some of the most beautiful places I've ever seen and from some of the hardest and most challenging things I've ever done. Like my hike to the enchantments in Washington when I climbed South Sister in Oregon, or Mount Panagos in Utah, or when I walked 100 miles of the Camino here uh, during the winter. I did make plenty of images during those times, and they are very special to me because they remind me of those challenges that I was able to overcome. But they weren't good enough to be in the book, because without the context of all the hardships and challenges that I had to go through to make them, well, they aren't as good. This is the tricky part, because your darlings are likely invisible to you. How can you tell if an image makes you feel the way you feel when you look at it because of the composition, the light, or if it's because the experience that you had when you made it? Or maybe a combination of both. In my opinion, the best way to tell is by giving your images time. Take the photograph, make a quick and rough edit share them if you want, and then forget about them for a while. Maybe weeks, maybe months, perhaps even years. That way, when you finally get back to them, you should be a little bit more detached from the feelings that you felt when you made them. It's still subjective, but seeing them more for what they really are. Another way is to show them to someone else and ask them what is that they see in the image. Maybe someone close to you, maybe someone online, another photographer, a peer, ask, what is that you see in this image? Or maybe just see how people react when you share them online compared to other photos of yours. Photography is about creating something from within. Some even say that we should keep an audience of just one ourselves in mind when we create our images. And that's all good, but if we want to share what we saw, what we envisioned, what we felt with others, and maybe that's the purpose of art, then we need to think about them a little bit too. In the end, you must like all the images that you share, but not all the images that you like should be shared. And talking about images that evoke emotions and feelings, today I wanted to share with you the work of another of my Patreons, in this case, Victor McNeil. I'm gonna leave uh, his Instagram uh, somewhere around here and the link in the description down below. I really love how greedy his images are and how haunting and how beautiful they are. 
Thank you so much, Victor and all the other Patreons for your contributions. They really help supporting my work. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching again and see you in the next one.